this axle and I'm going to put it in through the top of the eye uh, just far enough to get it in there and then I'm going to put right after that um, I'm going to put a Dura collar on it so this first Dura collar is going to go between the top of the eye and the piece of plywood if I can do this there we go so I'll put that in there and okay so now it's through and now I'm going to run this this axle straight through that brass tubing that we put inside the wood so that it goes down into the bottom area all right so now it's through the, let me see there we go and now it's barely you can see it barely sticking out of the bottom of that uh, the uh, the uh, piece of uh, plywood there and then I'm going to slip on the next dura collar in between it and the bottom of the eye Any luck. There you go. So now that's through, and then I'm just going to continue on and run this shaft all the way down to the bottom, through the bottom of the eye. And I'm going to just hold them in place and I'm going to tighten up these Dura collars. Also known as shaft collars. There's the top, now the bottom. All right. Okay, so there's the bottom one. And right now, since the shaft isn't glued, you'll notice there is a little bit of up and down slop, but when I eventually do put a little drop of super glue in there to, to hold those in place, uh, that we'll get rid of that slop. Um, and then I can always go back into the Dura collars and adjust them up and down a little bit if I need to. All right, so now I have that mechanism on there for the eye horizontal. And this is where um, the uh, little servo uh, consistency uh, thing or little servo cycler came in. Um, there's, there's like several types of these on the market. There's, there's uh, um, I like this one, it's not very expensive. And, and what it does is I'm going to plug it in here. Uh, one side you just plug it into a battery pack. And the other side you plug into your servo. There you go. So there you can see the, uh, the top one is little S for signal and then the positive and a negative for the, the ground, okay? Um, and then on, on our servo wire, um, the yellow is the signal, the red is the positive, and the brown or the black, depending on the type of servo, is the negative. So all we have to do is plug that in here. There's actually room to put in three of these uh, here, but we'll just use for one. And it has three different settings and a little select button. One is the, the manual setting, so you can just move it back and forth like this and, and, and uh, see what the range is. Um, and and well, let me show you something here. Is like this servo is capable of going further than the throw of these eyes. So like you'll see that, you'll hear that little clicking. That's because that it, can, it can actually go further than the eyes uh, are built. And what I will do later on is when I go into my software program programming, I will use the software to limit the end throws of these servos. But that's, that's a little ways out there. All right, so um, the best reason to use these things is that um, I'll go to the next, I'll go to the, um, to the, I'll push the button, I'll go to the center setting. And this actually centers the servo, all right? Um, so this is really great. So when, you, uh, when you're assembling the servo and the servo, servo horns, um, you can pop this on without having to resort to, um, to pulling out a transmitter and a receiver and setting all that up and putting that on there. Um, and this is just a really great way to center your servo. The last setting is a cycler, and, and I'll go I'll let it go through there. You can see where it's going through its farther than its reach. And once again, I'm going to control that through the through uh, through software later. So so because that would be a really bad thing because this is going to wear out your servo if you do that too much. All right, it'll start wearing out the little disc that's inside. There's a little carbon disc inside these servos, um, and what happens is that carbon will get will get um, rubbed off of that servo, and all of a sudden the servo is going to start doing this all the time. It's going to start twitching because it's it's hunting for that little spot, but 
once again. So here it is. Um, I go to the center and now it's all centered up and I'm a happy boy and I can unplug it. And now I know that the servo is, is uh, centered up there. All right. So that's the reason for those. Now I'll go ahead and attach the bottom. Um, now here's the bottom. This is just again made from two pieces of plywood that have been sandwiched together. Um, and one of them, one of them actually has the, uh, the, uh, the, little, the little arms on it so that it can hold the servo onto it. And the other side uh, is, um, is double thick so that I can, I can mount these two pieces of brass to it. Because I wanted it to be fairly thick up here um, to, to get this distance to match there uh, between, between this area, between these two areas. I wanted these pretty much the same, uh, that thickness. Um, uh, and also, uh, the, the thicker they are, the more stable it is, the less likelihood it is to, to wobble back and forth like this. So I deliberately made that fairly thick. So, all right, so I'll go ahead and attach this guy on here. Um, I used two uh, 832nd uh, socket head cap screws for this with, um, with nuts on the other end. And I'll go ahead and attach these now. We use a lot of, um, when I was working at Stan Winston's, we used a lot of uh, 832nd cap head screws. And what we did to identify our little um, screwdrivers was we put blue zip ties on them so we could go right away, you know, quickly put something together so that nobody was waiting on us. Uh, because that was one of our things. Nobody waits on us. It happened, but we tried not to. So I'll go ahead and attach that nut to the end there. I won't tighten it all the way because I'll get the other one started out. So these two pieces of brass are just sandwiching onto this, to this uh, double piece of plywood down here. So I'll get that in there. Nice and tight. All right, there we go. So now we have this attached to the vertical. So this is going to provide our vertical motion for the eye there. All right. And then the way it's being run through is this servo on the bottom. And once again, you can put this servo on the top as well. In fact, I would normally put this on the top, but like I said before, there's just not enough room. So you'll see on this, uh, this uh, servo, I've, I've added a little brass arm to give it a little longer throw. And once again, I have uh, uh, these, the Dubro socket head caps, uh, the rod bearings right here, and I'll just pop this on. There we go, and there we go, there's our our up and down servo for it. And just for giggles, I'll attach the, uh, the servo cycler to this as well to take a look at it before we go on. All right, there's one, there's the other. And if I hold this here, You can see that this is controlling the up down. So I'll hold this like that for the vertical. Lots of throw, looking up and looking down. And there it is on the side again. All right, so there we have. And once I go, if I hit the center, it's already centered up because I'd centered it up previously. And I can unplug this and we can move on.